Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to speak with Simon Dixon of Bank to the Future. Simon Dixon, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me back, Max. All right, Simon, this is kind of an interesting phase in your development as an entrepreneur. You are moving to Hong Kong to take Bank to the Future essentially out of the UK. Talk a little bit about it. Well, I've been traveling the world for the last years, you know, discussing the world seems to be interested in topics like Bitcoin and crowdfunding and alternative finance. I think the world is fed up of the traditional. Um, they're looking at the alternative. And I've been talking about it for many years, but now it's actually happening. Billions are being raised. You know, uh, Bitcoin's going global. Um, everything's happening right now. So I've been to Isle of Man, which are looking at building Crypto Valley. Me and you went there for the Crypto Valley conference. I just got back from Iceland. They're the most innovative country in the world in terms of actually chucking out bankers and looking at alternatives. Um, and uh, we've been looking at Asia as well. The whole world is now adjusting um, to this. So I want to I want to position us in the environment where you know we live in a country called the Internet. It doesn't have borders, um, and yet when you do what we do. Um, countries consider it as borders. Yeah, I want um, to talk about Iceland for a second because, of course, they have a raging crypto mining industry going on in Iceland. They take advantage of the cheap energy through geothermal energy that they have almost for free there, which is a huge cost in the crypto mining. And it's part of this new Bitcoin capital that you and I put together, really, after you being on my show many times. We started going to Bitcoin conferences back in Prague many years ago, we finally came together. Something that is a, on your platform now in Bank to the Future, it's actually the first global, for the most part, uh, much more than any other crowdfunding platform in the world, which are restricted pure, uh, for jurisdictions. In other words, a UK crowdfunding site, like uh, uh, some here, they're only available to those people living here in the UK. Whereas Bank to the Future now, starting in June, will be available throughout the entire globe. This is the first time an equity crowdfunding platform has global reach, correct? Yeah, well, it's, it's been a three-year multi-regulatory, multi-jurisdiction experiment, but we got there, we put together a very complex structure, but we wanted to replicate the way that people are actually investing, which is they don't see the borders. Right, the way the internet is, the way crowdfunding should be, should be global, and the way crypto is. So Bitcoin Capital, just to follow up a little bit, that has a third of the uh, capital that people invest and they can go to your platform and they can in actually invest in this. It's an equity crowdfunding platform. A third of it is in mining, which will be paid out as a daily dividend. A third of it is in startups. So various crypto startups around the world, like we got involved in BitPay when it was still worth $5 million. Now it's worth $165 million. And a third of it will actually be in the crypto coins themselves, like Startcoin, I would imagine is a great coin to be investing in just as an investor in the Bitcoin capital, correct? Yes, yeah, so Bitcoin capital is something really exciting because for years now, after speaking around the world, people aren't constantly asking, how can I get involved? How can I get started? And you know, crypto is still a little bit hard to get started with. So me and you, we created Bitcoin capital as a way to allow people to get investment, get exposure to the high risk, high return cryptocurrency sector. Um, and you know, things like people don't want to be constructing mining rigs, but we can give people exposure to the coins that can be generated through mining. People don't know how to avoid the scams and which companies are good and which companies are bad. So we've been in the sector, we can do the due diligence on that. Not only that, but we can use things like crowdfunding, whereby rather than us having to find the deals, we can let the crowd decide which ones they want funded. Um, they put it on start join, for example, get an idea funded. Then they come to Bank to the Future, sell some stock to investors. If the investors like it, we can come in with Bitcoin Capital, top them up. And really, they haven't, they haven't touched any kind of traditional venture capitalist or financial institution in that whole mix. So now we're seeing all these, these technologies collide. In fact, that's exactly how we got Bitcoin Capital started. We said, we put it on start join. We said, do you like this? Should we do this? They said yes, they funded it. So then we put it on Bank to the Future now. And in the first week, we've raised almost a couple of hundred dollars. You know, and uh, a couple of hundred couple thousand, thousand dollars. hundred thousand dollars, Simon. That's couple like an Austin Powers moment there. Yeah, a couple of hundred. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. And, uh, you know, it looks like we're, we're on our way to raising a million for that. And then we can really start putting some... Some, some funding into this, and, and investors can get exposure to this without having to do all the geeky hard bits that it takes. Yeah, to get well, if involved. Barry Silbert has a fund in New York, the Winklevoss twins have a fund in New York. This is the only, this is the third way people can invest in crypto using a fund. However, it's global, it's crowdfunded, it's superior to this other. 
I got to work on my Austin Powers. You, you, I think I used a pinky. I used my, my, my forefinger. I got I to gotta work on that. But you know, you bring up a good point here, Simon Dixon, and that innovation is the key, and this is something sorely missing in the United Kingdom, which is oppressed and suppressed from the top down, from the Buckingham Palace on down. There's this kind of snide, anti-innovation feeling that really cripples the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and you say, you know what, let's just leave it all together and let's go to Hong Kong, which incidentally is also where uh, HSBC might find themselves because of this show chased them out of town. Douglas <laughs> Flint, I think he's, uh, he, he, he's, he's being sent out of town on a rail. But just talking to people like Russell Brand for a second, who's got a revolution going on. And we came up with this idea of a true boycott hedge fund to go with his Trues News so that people tie boycotts with selling short in a hedge fund. And then I talked to somebody else who's in the business of retiring student debt. There's a, there's a, a company here or an outfit here as well in the U.S. where they can buy student debt for four cents on the dollar and then retire the debt, get rid of the debt. So here you're having a hedge fund, could be an offshore hedge fund. It's true boycott hedge fund. It ties into Russell Brand's Trues YouTube channel. And then it goes through Bank to the Future. And then we use those funds to retire debt. So we're using the tools of capitalism to change the course of economics in the 21st century. That's the theme I want to touch on here. Respond to this idea that the course of capitalism in the 20th century, we're going to change the course of this river and make it flow in a different way. Your thoughts? Well, I always said that, that all our problems don't actually stem from capitalism. Many people believe that capitalism was a crisis. I've always said, you've always said, it was a banking crisis. We haven't had capitalism. We've had um, banks which are uh, entitled to super subsidies with the ability to create 97% of the global money supply, with the ability to um, you know, benefit from programs like quantitative easing, zero interest rates, everything that you talk about constantly on your show. Um, and that's what the financial crisis was. The true part of capitalism, the bit where you see SMEs and small to medium sized businesses creating jobs, um, getting funded through crowdfunding, you know, that's in, in the case of the UK, that's 60% of all the jobs. That's the bit that needs to be stimulated. And the bit that I'm so excited about with the cryptocurrencies, with hedge funds, is, is a lot of the innovation has already been done by the investment banks, but it was used in a parasitical way. Now we can use those very same tools, those very same innovation, but we can do it without the bank. I, I, I tweeted recently, this time 10 years ago, I was working as a market maker for an investment bank, and I was transferring to corporate finance. Now forward 10 years, and I'm market making in cryptocurrencies, and I'm doing corporate finance through equity crowdfunding, helping businesses raise finance. But the difference between now and 10 years ago is that that's all happening without a bank in the middle. And I think it's a symbol for where we're going over the next 10 years. And then, you know, things like Kaiser Report, which has brought attention like this to these parasitical practices for years, I think it's time for Kaiser Report to actually come into its own, implement a lot of these things. And it's, it's, it's not about talking, there's specific actions. And then when you can take someone like Russell Brand, who's got a message, who's got a large following, agree with him, disagree with him, whatever it may be, but people can now fund these things. And someone like Russell Brand can come along and create a hedge fund for good, turn everything on its head and use the tool, use the same tools that, that he's complaining about, but actually use them for, to forward his agenda. Right, I mean, where capitalism, where does it come from, that notion of capitalism? It comes from, essentially, Adam Smith uh, and the Enlightenment. You know, there was the Enlightenment, which is a firm break between the medievalism and the concentration and centralization of power amongst the monarchy. We had something called the Enlightenment, uh, which broke up the monarchy, you know, in a way that just like the Renaissance and the printing press uh, and these other technologies broke up the monarchy in those days, and you had the decentralization of power, and you had the proliferation of knowledge. The Enlightenment said, you know, we don't want a fixed price regime where prices are set by a central authority, the, the church or the king. We want to create a decentralized market and create trade. And that's the beginning, really, of capitalism as we know it. Now, unfortunately, because the Ben Bernanke's, the Mario Draghi's, and the Janet Yellen's of the world have reinstituted centralized authority, they reinstitute a monarchy of central bank uh, you know, pontiffs who then dictate the price of money. And they've destroyed. They've destroyed everything Adam Smith stood for, everything the Enlightenment stood for and as it relates to the economy. They've destroyed. So what we're saying is let's bring it back. Let's bring 
Let's bring price discovery back. Let's bring Adam Smith back. Let's bring capitalism back. That's what Russell Brand and his revolution can embrace. If he wants to raise tens of millions or $50 million for some development in East London, we can do that for him using the tools we have available to us that have been destroyed by Mark Carney at the Bank of England, by Mario Draghi, Janet Yellen, and all the corrupt bankers like Douglas Flint at HSBC, who, thank God, were running him out of town as the scoundrel that he is after we destroyed Wonga. This, this show destroyed Wonga, Simon Dixon. Wonga's now trying to, they're going to change their name because they've been shamed so egregiously. Uh, any, 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 any thoughts about Wonga? Uh, are, you, are you sad to see them go? We have about 30 seconds to go. Well, no, I, I'm just excited to the future right now. So look, we're, we're done talking with all the old stuff, the stuff that's just um, a parasite on the economy. Let's build some stuff. Let's build some jobs. Let's build sustainability. Let's, let's make banks actually compete for once. Um, and that's all happening right now. So I'm really excited to drive that forward. All right, so the next time we talk, we'll probably, you'll be in Hong Kong. Uh, we'll be back in Hong Kong. We have a lot of friends over there at ANX, which is one of the biggest uh, crypto exchanges in Hong Kong. Our friend uh, Ken, Ken Lo, CEO. Yeah, he invented the Bitcoin debit card, which I'll be using out there and spending my Bitcoins anywhere they accept a credit or debit card. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Simon Dixon. Thanks, Max. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest. Crypto and crowdfunding expert Simon Dixon of Bank to the Future. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.